All right, what's going on, everybody? Jacob here, Live Dolphin Syndicate. Usually around this time, we got a live stream coming out. Usually seven o'clock every single Wednesday, we go live. But Donovan is at an event, and personally, I just don't have the energy to do a full hour plus live stream by myself. So instead, uh, what I'd like to talk to you is about the Miami Dolphins in the number one seed. As you guys know, as you saw in the title, as you know, Dolphins are number one in the AFC. And I want to just kind of briefly talk about how I, how important I think it is that the Dolphins maintain that number one seed uh, and, and what that could potentially mean for the Dolphins once they do eventually make the playoffs. So the, the AFC standings currently go as so. Miami Dolphins in the number one. Uh, is, and then followed by the Baltimore Ravens. Both teams are 9-3 and three on the season. The Dolphins have the tiebreaker uh, as they have a better conference record. We've played one more conference game than the Ravens have. They're 6-3. and three. We are 6-2. and two. So with that one loss difference, half of a game difference, we do have that number one seed. Uh, it's going to come down to playing the Baltimore Ravens most likely. That's going to likely be the tiebreaker. Uh, I mean, if it's not record, then that will be the tiebreaker, the head-to-head performance will be the tiebreaker then you have the Kansas City Chiefs who we already have a head-to-head uh loss over but they do have one game one extra loss uh, they are eight and four and then the Jacksonville Jaguars eight and four with the Jacksonville Jaguars losing Trevor Lawrence for at the very least an extended period of time it's likely to be that they're not going to end up as the number one seed but you never know stranger things have happened we see what's, go- what's going on with the 49ers with a backup quarterback backup quarterback from last year now this year he's maintained the starting job Again, that's not going to happen with C.J. Beathard, but again, weirder things have happened. There is an outside chance that the Texans get really hot. They're 7-5 and right now. They're two games back. They get hot. They win out. There's a chance, but it's likely going to be between those four teams, but it's really likely going to be between Miami Dolphins, Baltimore Ravens, and the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, If you just want to look at history and what history says about this, uh, number one seeds have won the Super Bowl 25 of the 48 Super Bowls going back to the early 70s. Uh, and then if you look at since 1990, 32 of the 64 teams rated as the number one seed on both sides have made the Super Bowl with 14 champions claiming that honor. So obviously the number one seed more often than not wins the Super Bowl. And that is the goal. But that's that's pretty surface level. That's pretty easy to tell. You know, you want the number one seed. You want the home field advantage, which is something that I'll get into uh, you want to play one less game, less chance for injuries. There is that idea that, you know, maybe you don't want the bye week in the terms of you want your guys fresh and in game, you know, game readiness to ma- maintain at all time high. I don't really think that's much of a thing, especially when you're the Miami Dolphins. You haven't won a single playoff game. You haven't got out of the wild card round since the early 2000s, since I was literally a baby. Uh, so I don't care. I want as easy of a path as you know point blank a path to the Super Bowl as possible so that obviously comes with the number one seed home field advantage not having to play that wild card weekend and being the number one seed statistically speaking you have a very good chance of making the playoffs Um, but I want to look further at this team in what it means to get the number one seed and part of that is that home field advantage and we have had a very strong home field advantage so far this year undefeated at home all three losses have come on the road either here in the United States or on the road in Germany, uh, again, against really good teams. But we've taken care of business at home at Hard Rock Stadium. The biggest thing about getting that home field advantage for the Miami Dolphins, besides having excuse me, that extra game uh, off, is getting to choose the weather, basically. Not literally speaking, but going to Kansas City where that weather is come January is going to be so unpredictable. We seen we've seen their playoff games oftentimes you're looking at the 20s. Doesn't often snow, but it can. It's windy, it's cold, it's miserable. And last couple of weeks, New York and in uh in Washington, it's not been freezing by any means, but it's definitely been colder than what we're experiencing down here in South Florida. You know, it's currently in the 60s at the time of recording. Uh but the weather it's a real thing. It's something that I'm sure is still going to loom around this offense when you go into the playoffs. And it's not even necessarily about Tua's arm, which because we've seen Tua's arm strength and his just overall ability to throw the ball deep has tremendously gotten better. Uh, but when you have a pass-first offense, a pass-the-ball-to-open-up-the-run-game offense, 
you want as good of weather as you possibly can have. So having to go to a Baltimore on the coast, really cold, really windy. Having to go to Kansas City, really cold, really windy. Jacksonville, not so much. A little cold, but their weather is, you know, again, still Florida. So don't really have to worry about too much there. But that weather advantage, to be able to have that game at home, even if it's in the 60s, it's probably not. It's probably going to be in the 80s because that's just what happens. We've had a relatively cold winter so far. Winter, is it even winter yet? I guess maybe. I don't know. We've had a really well, relatively cold winter slash fall so far, but that's just relative to Florida. Having that home field advantage where the weather is going to be in your favor in a pass-first offense with a quarterback that his arm strength is, look, it's gotten much better, but it certainly still comes into question every now and then. Getting that, getting that weather advantage, being at home, maybe even having heat as, as something to use to your benefit is huge. Uh, I think also mentally for this team will be would be a massive hurdles overcome because if you're getting that number one seed, you got there because you earned it in terms of wins. I don't think the Chiefs are going to lose out. I don't think the Ravens are going to lose out. I don't think we're going to win every single game for the rest of the season. That would mean we have to beat good teams to get to that point. That means we have to beat probably at least two of the Dallas Cowboys, the Baltimore Ravens, the uh, Buffalo Bills last game of the season, two of those games at home, four of our last five games at home, that one last road game is going to be against those Baltimore Ravens. That's going to be the hardest game left on our schedule. But if we get that number one seed, you've overcome that mental hurdle at least one time, probably two times, maybe even three times of can this team beat a good team? We would now know that this team is good enough to beat teams over 500 in the moment when we're playing them, which is something that we haven't seen since last year against the Buffalo Bills. So that the mental hurdle is there. The, 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 the physical weather component is there. Uh, obviously, the statistical purpose is there. So let's just take a look at how likely it is for the Dolphins to get there. So obviously, we're the number one seed, followed by the Ravens, followed by the Chiefs, followed by the Jaguars. So you know, going down that list, take a look at the Baltimore Ravens schedule. They come back from their bye week this week. So, you know, they're still be missing Mark Andrews. Marlon Humphrey's been beat up. I believe he's back. They, they've got they've got a few injuries. Uh, they open back up with the Rams. Rams are traveling over to Baltimore. And what we've seen from the Ravens in terms of playing NFC teams at home, they've destroyed every one of them. So I expect that to continue. Then they get to play the Jacksonville Jaguars in Jacksonville on Sunday Night Football. But that is going to be likely still without... Trevor Lawrence, we'll see what happens there. The San Francisco 49ers, and that's the other way around. NFC team, they're going to have to go all the way over to San Francisco, us and then the Steelers. Likelihood is they're not going to lose more than two games. Let's say they lose to us. Let's say they lose to the 49ers. I don't really see a world where they lose to the Rams, the Jaguars, and the Steelers. So that's that's a best-case scenario of 3-2, and two, just two losses. Having that tiebreaker go, this, go the way of the Dolphins in this scenario. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, they are a game behind, so they would need to catch up. Uh, so we're going to go, let's, let's just, for, for now, for argument's sake, let's go 3-2 and two with the Baltimore Ravens. The Kansas City Chiefs, they play this week uh, against the Buffalo Bills at home, and then it's a pretty smooth rest of their schedule. You have the, the, the New England Patriots, the Las Vegas Raiders. It's a divisional opponent, and we see how divisional opponents play each other. Uh, it will be at home, so maybe they give them some trouble. Probably not. The Bengals... Jake Browning, pretty solid. And the Chargers, at most, I expect them to lose one game. The Bills, you know, I actually kind of feel good about the Bills winning this week. Not feel good as in terms I want them to win, but I feel good looking at the Bills coming off of a, of, off of a bye week. If they had just gotten one stop, they beat the Philadelphia Eagles in Philadelphia. Weren't able to do so. Uh, and now the Chiefs coming off a pretty you know pretty embarrassing loss it wasn't a blowout but we saw the issues with this Chiefs team really get exposed Patrick Mahomes having no true number one wide receiver uh, they've had some injuries on their defense that came into fruition and Packers were able to really just throw the ball all over them uh, and we know Buffalo Bills they don't have that go-to number two wide receiver Dalton Kincaid has really stepped up this season in his rookie year uh I can see them losing to the to the Buffalo Bills, to be honest with you guys. Even though we probably don't want that as Dolphins fans, we don't want the Bills sneaking to the playoffs. I can very much see that happening. But 
at most, I see them losing one game. So let's call it four and one, drive out the season. That would tie them with the Ravens. That would tie them with us. And then the Jacksonville Jaguars, again, really rough to lose Trevor Lawrence for the rest of the season. Not the rest of the season, probably just two or three weeks, excuse me. You have the you have the Cleveland Browns who have their own injury issues, but Joe Flacco is more established into that offense now than C.J. Beathard will be as he's got an actual live game reps. Even though he just showed up, he actually played in a game right, where he started and prepared the whole week. It's in Cleveland. I'm probably going to take Cleveland to win that. And then, again, the Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore, I'm going to take Baltimore to win that. And then they probably win their remaining three games from there for the Buccaneers, the Panthers, and the Titans. So on that logic, I'm going to say they're out uh, from the number one seed. And that leaves the Miami Dolphins who have that game advantage against the Chiefs, do not have that advantage against the Ravens. Ravens, again, let's say they go 3-2. and two. That means you know, we win against the Titans, probably. We win against the Jets, probably. Cowboys at home, that's going to be a tough test. That, and that's going to be a test of the two teams. Like, hey, who can beat a team in the moment when they're above 500? We'll have to wait and see on that one. The Ravens and then the Bills throughout the season. We definitely have the hardest schedule of the bunch. So if you just go based off the schedule... I'd say we probably do not get the number one seed. I think we probably drop two of those last three games. I, I'd say you know, we win that Cowboys game. Uh, we we lose the Ravens and the Bills. Uh, the, Ra- uh, the Bills game, we'll be probably fighting for seeding. Already have had the division on lock, most likely. Still could be open up in the air, but the Bills I can see having more to fight for. I'm not predicting that. I'm just saying I can see it happening. Uh, so schedule-wise, if I had to guess, I think, that the what would the tiebreaker be between the Chiefs and the Ravens? Um, where, where am I looking for? Where am I looking for? Where am I looking for? Standings, NFL standings. So the Chiefs in the conference are currently six and one. So they have a much better conference record. Not much better, but they have a full game advantage as they have two less games two less losses same amount of wins as the ravens they have two more conference games so unfortunately if i had to predict right now i would predict the chiefs to get that number one seed but we don't we talked already about how important that is again the weather the confidence level just looking at the statistics it's very important for the miami dolphins to get this number one seed it's very important especially mentally, just to get those wins over good teams heading into a playoff push where every team you play is going to have a winning record. Every team you play against has a chance now to win the Super Bowl if they just keep winning. Uh, So massive, massive deal these last few games. Massive deal, especially those last three games. It's in our own hands. We control our own destiny. Now you just have to go out and play. Let us know down in the comments below. Do you think the Dolphins are going to end up with the number one seed? Do you think it's as important as I think it is to get that number one seed? Let us know everything you think down below. While down there, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. We've been growing a lot recently. Got a lot of views on the channel. We really appreciate all the support from all our fellow Dolphins fans. That's what we are. We're just a couple Dolphins fans who like to yap on a mic. We appreciate y'all very much for tuning in. Sorry about the stream today. It happens. Business. Life happens. Uh, we will still be coming out with you guys with a few videos over the next couple of days, uh, covering the, the covering uh, covering the Monday Night Football game against the Tennessee Titans, which we will both be at as always. So if you ever run into us at the stadium, please make sure to say hi. We've already run into one of you guys before. Uh, so thank you all very much for watching. We should have a great rest of your day. Go Dolphins. Take care, everybody.